It's the need for speed, and this year's running of the computer form sprint has an open look about it. The three-year-olds are making their presence felt over and above more proven and seasoned campaigners coming into the race off the back of the Pongrats Cape Flying Championship. Market favoritism goes to a coupling of three-year-olds from Paul Peter's yard in Master Archie and the Philly Big Burn. The good-looking Master Archie lines up in the computer form, having recently won the Grade 3 Man O' War Sprint. Master Archie wins it from Cleaver Green. This has been a mission for a long time. He's got tons of speed. He's got a nice weight. Gavin gets on well with him. He's fit. He's put up a good gallop today. And I think he's going to be very competitive come the race. Big Burn is on a bicycle. It's Big Burn is Like clear. his stable and companion, Big Burn, Big Burn also has graded stakes for him. She has never run over a thousand, but she's got a lot of gas. She's doing exceptionally well. And as you say, similar to Master Archie, three-year-old, with a lot of speed, good weight. And you know what, I can't separate these horses. They're all very, very well, and we're looking forward to a, a lovely race with them. Master Archie and Big Burn are two of six three-year-olds in this year's running, and will face stiff opposition when looking at those runners coming out of the Cape Flying Championship. To the wire they come, and it's very close. Maybe Bohika just kept going in front. His prep coming to the races has been faultless, you know, uh, we're really happy with how he's come in. Uh, uh, but as I've said before, he is a horse that has in and out form. Yeah. I think we've got a jockey aboard that gets on exceptionally well with our horse. I'm really happy we're drawn on the right side of the track. The outside draws seem to be favouring the sprinters at the moment at Turf and Team. So a lot of the boxes are ticked, but the final one needs to be ticked on Saturday. Second and third across the line in Mr. Cobb's and African Rain, along with Real Gone Kid from Brett Crawford's yard, who was just one length off the front at the finish, have made the trip from the Cape this week. African Rain um, comes off a you know good run in the Cape Flying in Cape Town. Um, he is only a three-year-old, and you know I'm, I'm always a little bit hesitant about bringing three-year-olds up to this kind of race. But I think he's up to it at this stage. He had a good run, good prep run the other day at Kenilworth in the Pinnacle Stakes, um, and he's just really matured into a lovely sprinting type of horse. He's a good-looking horse. He's a nice, strong horse. There obviously, isn't much between my two horses. I don't think I mean, they finished second and third in the Cape Flying, so very little between the two. Um, and I think it was a tough call to decide who should be riding who. I did say to Elder, you decide who you want to ride. And he said to me, no, you decide. And then eventually he said uh, he'll he'll take African Rain. You know, the, the Turf and Tan Thousand is, is a pretty quick one. Um, and I think it might suit both of my horses. They like to come off a good pace like every the horses come back to. So they should be suited to the track. Just got to hope that they obviously travel up well and that they are good enough on the day. And you know, I'm hopeful of, of having two good runs. I can say his preparation has been flawless. He's, I think he's, he's at the top of his game at the moment. So um, obviously the inside draw, generally it seems to favour middle to outside at Turfing Team, but the last stage of the prep is the travel, and as long as he travels well, then we, we're expecting him to run well. True to life, who was also in the shake-up in the Pongrats Cape Flying Championship, comes off a good win in her warm-up. Look, it's a very competitive field, um, but I'll definitely give her a chance in the race. I mean, looking at her last three starts, um, she's been on form and she's turned around the form on where he'd go on her last start. And True to life wins it. From her last start, I would say she's at her best at the moment and I'm hoping for her best run. It's Hello Winter, Low Video, True to Life, Bold Dancer. Her stable companion is the consistent and hard knocking Hello Winter, Hello. And gonna win by about a length in the end. True to Life is in a photo with NVIDIA. Has she got a bit to find in this race? Look, uh, I do think she does. She has beaten the boys before. She, she's got the ability. And um, the draw, I think, will play a big part in um, Saturday's race. You know, he, she's drawn on the outside. Her last couple of starts, she's been drawn on the inside. So. With a bit of luck in running and uh, the right horses to follow, I'm, I'm sure she'll be running on late. Did you choose her over her stable companion based on the draw? Look, purely um, she, she has beaten True to Life and that was on her best form, so I do think she might be the better filly. It's a busy race for the Paul Peter Yard, with them saddling another four besides their coupling of favourites. Tell me about Winter Stories first. Yes, Winter Stories, uh... He's doing well. We've got uh, Kone Offer riding 
running him. Uh, he's been working well. Uh, he's well weighted. He's been under a bit of sufferance. Uh, I wouldn't say sufferance. He's been carrying a, a big weight in his previous races. Now it's level weights. So he could be competitive running to the money. And uh, Paul Ransom, the old boy in the, the, old boy in the race, uh, he's doing well. Uh, he hasn't been at his best form-wise recently, but uh, he seems to have turned the corner in his work. Valder Orsha, also another exciting runner. Yes, uh, he's never been a thousand as well, but last time when we applied the blink blinkers to him, he showed tons of pace and Warren said, don't be shy to run him over a thousand. Uh, he also worked exceptionally well today and he might be the dark horse in the, in the race. And what about Heaven's Girl? Another good filly, a lot of speed. I think the speed's going to be on there. Uh, Muzieni aboard and uh, she's well, she's well. Uh, we just have be hoping uh, that she settles down in race day. She could be a little bit hot, but uh, she's doing exceptionally well. And uh, let's hope we can keep her like this until race day. You can't miss the grey in Anna Capri. The work has been very good, Michelle. Um, I'm always happy with her. Obviously, the 1,000 metres is her preferred distance. Uh, I think we'll uh, give a very good account of herself. Uh, she's got the speed. We've got draw five. But she'll probably find the better going uh, with her speed. And uh, look, we're going to make them run. 150 to go to Lisi and G3 to Bartoli down the inside's a big runner. Then World Sports betting merchants winner Chief in November last year is Elysian Chief. Chief as well. Look, he's a horse with a lot of pace and um, as you say, he, he, did, he did really well. Um, he, he had two feature race wins in the trot and I think he's an up and coming horse and I do, do definitely think he's a horse that um, has, a, has a massive chance in the race. Static Green has now popped its nose in front. Part of a Rounding off the field is Ecstatic Green, seen winning a progress plate over a thousand meters at the Val early in April. This is an interesting entry for me in the computer form sprint. Talented filly, is this a step up for her? Massive step up. It's a massive step up, but she couldn't have been more impressive in her uh, seasonal debut over a thousand meters. And uh, in the time that I've had her, I've never had her in this type of form and well-being. This is not really my style to jump the gun uh, we, uh, under big sufferance at the weights. But I just thought, you know, if she gives a really classy effort, it makes uh, Scots feel realistic, so it is a stepping stone. But at the same time, I'm wondering if a thousand meters couldn't actually be what she's looking for because her win couldn't have been more impressive than it actually was. She did let us down last season, but we were also trying 12s, 14s, even up to the mile. So um, she's a very interesting runner and uh, obviously a tough field. We look prayerless. We might run better than our price. I think it's a, it's a top class uh, field and uh, really strong uh, sprinters. And um, yeah, look, I think it's a really competitive race. I think it's really open and um, I think everyone's going out there with the equal playing field. Look, I think it's a very open field this year. I don't think there's any huge standouts. I don't think there are any champion sprinters around. Obviously, Bahika, um, you know, beat us down in Cape Town. So, you know, he will be the obvious horse to beat. But uh, as I say, it's a very open race this year. And I think it, you know, it could be one of any of them. But uh, I definitely think I'm in with a chance and not without one. You know what? I'm desperate to win this race. <laughs> Uh, I've always wanted to win the computer from Sprint. I've run second once and uh, growing up uh, as a kid uh, we used to go to Gosforth Park and the computer from Sprint, you know, you like speed and uh, it was, I said if I ever become a trainer it's a race I would like to win and so please God may it be, uh, be able to win it.